In the quiet moments before the world stirs, have you ever felt the gentle touch of God's presence waking you from your slumber? Today, we embark on a profound journey to unravel the mysteries behind why God chooses this sacred time to stir our souls. Dawn symbolizes a new beginning, a fresh start gifted to us by the grace of God. Psalm 30 verse 5 reminds us that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. It is during these early hours that God seeks to renew our spirits, granting us the strength and courage needed to face the challenges of the day ahead. Just as a farmer rises early to tend to his fields before the sun reaches its peak, God wakes us at dawn to equip us for the tasks He has set before us. It is during these quiet moments of preparation that God imparts His wisdom and guidance. As daylight bids farewell and the night sky takes control, we experience the sweetness of a good night's rest, whether as relief after a long day of work or surrender after a night disturbed by city noise. However, why does God sometimes interfere wakings in the midst of our well-deserved rest, knowing it's the only time we have to repose? We live in a spiritual world governed by two predominant forces, good and evil. Regardless of our beliefs, the spiritual realm completely overrides the physical realm. What we often forget is that while we're deeply asleep in our beds, the world continues to turn, immersed in a spiritual war. Have you ever wondered why most evil in the world occurs at night? Darkness is often associated with evil, and the devil chooses the night as the ideal time for his malicious activities going unnoticed. If God fully made us aware of the spiritual realities unfolding at night, many of us would be vigilant, dedicating more time to prayer instead of easily falling asleep. In 1 John 5.19 we are enlightened. We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. When God wakes you in the middle of the night, it's a call for you to pray, facing the evil forces gathering against you. In Matthew 13.25, the Bible tells us that while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. In other words, during our periods of rest, the devil is actively plotting chaos and destruction in our lives. To confront this silence, God unexpectedly awakens us at night as a warning about what's happening in the invisible spiritual realm. While it may seem unexpected and unsettling, there's a reason for it. Just like the parable of the wheat and tares, God knows our enemy and is always seeking ways to protect and keep us safe. He understands our vulnerability and perceives when we're in danger. God watches the enemy's schemes, staying vigilant and present to ensure our safety while we sleep. The devil understands that at night we are more vulnerable, unable to pray or read the Bible as we sleep. He knows that a sleeping man is unaware of his surroundings. So, when the night falls and the world succumbs to sleep, that's when the enemy chooses to carry out his schemes. At that very moment, God calls us to vigilance, urging us to wake up and pray, because the best time to catch a thief is when he's about to commit the theft. When God awakens us to pray at night, it's precisely when the devil intensifies his efforts to lure us into sleep. Have you ever wondered why sleep seems more irresistible when the call is to pray? Let's remember the disciples of Jesus, who fell into a deep sleep in the Garden of Gethsemane before Jesus' arrest. It's no mere coincidence that drowsiness peaks when the need for prayer becomes urgent. If you were to wake up at the same time to check your phone or respond to a WhatsApp message, you probably wouldn't feel the same fatigue or drowsiness. However, when it comes to praying, the devil employs every means to attack, enveloping you with an intense desire to sleep. His arms feel heavy, and everything around whispers sweetly, trying to persuade you to stay in bed. He questions the importance of prayer, insinuating that it won't make a significant difference. He says, there's no need to interrupt your sleep, suggesting that leaving prayers for the morning is perfectly fine. But he's wrong. 
Whenever God wakes us up in the middle of the night, it's because he perceives that the enemy is launching attacks against us and he wants us to take control of the situation. Spiritual prayer emerges as a powerful antidote, empowering us to neutralize and dismantle the enemy's plans against us. The devil understands this power, which is why he sends waves of drowsiness enough to make us too comfortable to act. These are not mere coincidences. He recognizes that the effectiveness of prayer can thwart his plans against us. Waking up for prayer can become a challenging feat. However, those who respond to God's call are blessed with spiritual victory. The more persistent the sleep, the more effort is needed in our prayers. When you begin to pray, let your voice rise, accompanied by the determination flowing from within you. The enemy, upon sensing this fervent activity, will believe that his plans have been thwarted and your prayers and dreams exposed. The reality is that many people face numerous challenges in their daily lives and often overlook the realization that God can do much more for them. He may wake us up once or twice to pray because he wants to communicate with us in a unique way a communication that often goes unnoticed when circumstances start to unravel. Many of us attribute challenges to the idea that the enemy is aware of our problems and weaknesses, taking advantage of them. However, this perception is often late, resulting from our lack of attention to take the necessary action when God invites us to this special encounter. Job 33 but 14 reminds us, For God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it. Don't let ignorance harm your faith. Follow the impulse to rise at night. Pray carefully whenever you find victory over something. The enemy watches in secret, waiting for any stumble. In the Bible, we find the example of Peter, who was imprisoned, awaiting his execution. During the following night, an angel broke the chains of the prison and woke him from sleep. Peter, noticing the open doors, was intrigued as he did not immediately realize he had received a warning from the Lord. Quickly understanding that this was his only chance for freedom, Peter paid attention and followed the angel out of the prison. His obedience resulted in his release, avoiding a certain death. While many made excuses, claiming fatigue or lack of willingness to pray, Peter understood that obeying the Lord is more valuable than comfort. Instead of making excuses and staying in bed, Peter got up, followed the angel, and found his freedom. This story highlights that when God wakes us up at night to pray, we need to rely on our faith and obey his call. It doesn't imply that we must always stay awake all night in prayer, but if God inspires us, we should respond. It can be tempting to simply roll over in bed and go back to sleep when awakened at night, but it's crucial to take these moments seriously and listen carefully to what God may be trying to tell us.